Hello! So today we are going to look at the second part of The Hodge Hag by Dick King Smith. Yesterday we met Max and his family and Max was on a bit of a mission and an adventure to find a safe way for hedgehogs to cross the road and we left him at the point where he had discovered several crossings. So the next chapter, chapter three, has a picture of a lorry here. I wonder what that means. So by now it was quite late. The rush hour was over and the shops were shut. All was quiet. I'll wait, thought Max. And then when a car or lorry comes along, I'll cross in front of it. Do you think that's a good idea for a hedgehog to use a zebra crossing? Do you think it might work? So soon he saw something coming. It was a lorry. He was halfway across when he realised that the lorry had not slowed at all and it was almost on top of him, blinding him with its brilliant lights, deafening him with its thunderous roar. It was not going to stop. Lorries only stopped for people, not hedgehogs. The lorry driver, who until he was almost at the crossing, had been quite unaware of this tidy pedest tiny pedestrian, did the only possible thing. With no time to break or swerve, he steered so as to straddle, that means go on either side of, straddle the little animal. Looking back in his wing mirror, he saw that it was, it was okay. He was continuing unhurt. And he grinned and drove off into the night. But the sheer horror of this great monster passing above him with its huge wheels on either side of it threw Max into a panic. He made for the crossing as fast as he could, as fast as his little legs could carry him. But he didn't see the cyclist. Suddenly, wrenched around, and then he caught Max on the rump, that means the back of him, and he catapulted him head first into the face of the curbstone. Oh no, so Max has avoided the lorry, but not the cyclist. The next thing that Max recalled was crawling painfully under his own front gate. Somehow he had managed to come back over the zebra crossing. He had known nothing of the concern of the cyclist who had dismounted and peered at what looked like a small dead hedgehog, sighed and sadly pedalled away. He remembered nothing of his journey home, wobbling dazedly along on the now deserted pavement, guided only by his sense of smell. All he knew, all he knew was that he had an awful headache. The family crowded round him on his return, all talking at once. Where have you been all this time, said Ma. Are you all right, sir, said Pa. Did you cross the road, they both said. And Peony, Pansy and Petunia echoed. Did you? Did you? Did you? For a while, Max did not reply. His thoughts were muddled and when he did speak, his words were muddled too. I've got a head on the bump, he said slowly. The family looked at one another. Something bopped me in the hittum, said Max. And then I headed my bang, my ache, Bad's headly. Poor Max. He is in a state, isn't he, with his bumped head. But did you cross the road? cried his sisters. Yes, said Max wearily. I hound where the fumans cross over. But... But the traffic only stops if you're a human, not a hedgehog, interrupted Pa. Yes, said Max, not if you're a hodge hedge. And that, I think, is where the name of the story comes from. So Max has jumbled up his words and he's now a hodge hedge. Chapter four. Do you suppose he'll be all right, said Ma anxiously. It was dawn early in the morning and they were about to retire for the day. Remember, they sleep in the day. The children were already asleep in a thick bed of fallen leaves. I should hope so, said Pa. Hodge Hegg indeed. His brains are scrambled. Max slept the clock round and halfway round again. He did not stir till the evening of the following day. The shock had sent him into a kind of short, early hibernation. When at last he woke, his sisters rushed to nuzzle at his nose, the safest nuzzling place for hedgehogs. With squeaks of concern and his parents left their snail hunting and came trotting up. How are you feeling, dear? said Ma. Max considered this. His headache was almost gone and he was thinking straight. But his speech, he found, would still not behave properly. I'm a bit better, thanks, he said. 
You had a nasty knock, said Pa. You need rest, said Ma. Where's his sisters looking after him? Why not get back into bed? We'll bring you some nice slugs. I don't want to bed in to get, said Max. Oh, with his jumbled words still. I feel quite wake or wide. In fact, I feel like walking for a go. Pa took a moment to work out what he was saying. And then he said firmly, you're not going anywhere soon. Do you hear me? You stay home in the garden for a while. Get your strength back. Understand? Yes, Pa, said Max. I'll say what you do. Hmm. And he did do what Pa had said for a week or more. Peony, Pansy and Petunia fussed over their brother. They brought in the fattest, slimy slugs they could find and encouraged him to play their favourite game, hide and seek. However, this didn't work. When they hid, Max forgot to go and look for them. And when it was his turn, he forgot to go and hide. So busy was he, thinking about the business of road crossing. The girls would count to 30 with their eyes shut, but when they opened them, Max would still be sitting there thinking. Striped bits were no good. He didn't intend on trying that again. But maybe, he thought, there might be other methods. His determination to find out what was incre that was increased when Pa came back early one morning from a visit to the park with more bad news. Max overheard him telling Ma. Another one gone, Pa said. Not a relation, said Ma fearfully. No, said Pa. Chap from number 9A just up the road. I didn't know him well. But he always seemed a decent sort of hog. He was crossing in front of me not ten minutes ago. Misjudged it. Motorbike got him. Leaves a wife and six kids. That evening, Max waited until he was sure that Pa was out the way in the garden of number 5B. People in 5A always put out bread and milk for Max's family. But the people in 5B often provided something much better for their hedgehogs. Tinned dog food. Mm. Early morning, um, early evening, sorry, Pa crept through the dividing hedge to see if he could nick a saucer full of munching meat before his neighbour woke up from the day's sleep. Ma, said Max, I'm walking for a go. Ma was quick at translating by now. Did Pa say you could go, she said. No, said Max, but he couldn't say I didn't. And before Ma could do anything, he trotted off along the garden path. Oh, Max, called Ma, are you sure you'll be all right? Yes, of course, I'll be quite K.O. I think he means OK. Once outside the garden gate, he turned left and set off up the road in the opposite direction to his previous effort. By now, he was used to the noise and to brightness and confident that he was safe from traffic, as long as he did not step down into the road. When a human passed, he stood still. The creatures did not notice you, he found, if you did not move. He trotted on past the garden of number 9A with its now widow and six kids until the row of houses ended and a high factory wall began, so high that he would not have been able to read the notice on it beside the factory entrance. Max speed, five miles an hour, it said. Max kept going, a good deal more slowly than this. And then suddenly, once again, he saw not far ahead what he was seeking. Again, there was people crossing the street. There's Max. And there's the sign that says maximum speed. This time they did not go in ones and twos at random, but waited all together. And then at some signal, he supposed, crossed at the same time. Max drew nearer until he could hear at intervals a high, rapid beep, 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 beep noise. At the sound of which the traffic stopped and the people walked over safely. What's he found now? Hmm. Yeah, a pedestrian crossing. Creeping closer still, tight up against the wall, he finally reached the crossing place. And now he could see the new magic method. The bunch of humans stood, watched, just above their heads, the little man picture changed. And then, suddenly, they walked across when it changed to a green man. Walking and swinging his arms, the people walked, swinging their arms, while the high, rapid, peep, peep, peeping noise warned the traffic not to move. Max sat and watched for quite a long time, fascinated by the red man and the green man. He rather wished they could have been a red, a red hedgehog and a green hedgehog, 
but that was not really important, as long as hedgehogs could cross here safely. That was all he had to prove, and the sooner the better. He edged forward until he was just behind the waiting humans and watched tensely for the little green man to walk. And we'll stop there today. So just a few chapters left now. I wonder, is Max going to find a safe way for the hedgehogs to cross before anybody else gets hurt? Bye.